hello and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events. And spill the hot Darjeeling right into your lap. Scold it, Walt. Hello, Luxaria. Hello. How are you? I'm doing really well, She's actually. delicious. And Delirious she smells and delicious. lovely. Thank you. It's Black you. Opium. It's Black Opium <laughs> by Roll. It's my new fragrance. Yes. Yeah. Gate. I am um, a g- <laughs> Gate. <laughs> yes, open the gate. Open the gate. And when we say gate, happens. we mean a word I can't say. Um, <laughs> yes, quiet. Oh, so, hello. Oh, hello, how are you? Wonderful, actually. Very excited to be back. Are doing you? some more podcasts. Yes. So, today, so? Entitled so Parents today. Part 2. Yes. So, we loved doing the Entitled Parents Getting Instant Karma. I think that's a um, strong, that's a strong sentiment. We loved doing we lo- it. Okay, well, okay. We, 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 we enjoyed being shocked. We, en- <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed being part of the experience. Which is <laughs> <laughs> Just like a scare maze. Yeah, this is, welcome to the scare maze. And yes. in this one, you get shouted at by Karen. <laughs> you do, yes. And they are also related to you. Yeah, they <laughs> Horrific. <laughs> Unhinged. Gosh, so make yes. sure you do go check out the first original uh, Entitled yes. Parents podcast episode. It was a lot. It but was. today we're delving back into the world of Entitled Parents. We're going to read out some stories we found um, and hopefully you can relate. Maybe you don't want to relate. I don't know. Share some of your own experiences down below if oh, you have any gosh, like Entitled yes. Parents experiences. Whether they're your parents, other people you've seen, stories you may have heard. So anyway. Would let's... you like to go first? I don't mind. Yeah, should I go first? Should Yay, I pop my pussy first? Yeah, yeah, try, yeah. yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah pop okay. it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, inside your parents' story number one, my mum killed this woman. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and she was entitled to kill End of story. Her. Yeah. <laughs> so, this one is called Entitled Mother Demands <laughs> Demands I Cover My Tattoos Because They're Scaring Her Sleeping Child. I also have this one. Oh, you know? do you have yeah. it? Oh, okay. Oh, disgusting. Stop stealing then. from me. I'm in the ER waiting room and. Entitled mother comes in with her deathly ill child, and that's in like commas. Death in Ill. a bracket, sorry. Oh, it's going to be one of these. So the it? child is fast asleep in her arms. I'm wearing a tank top and have a Spirited Away themed piece on my upper arm. Oh, that's cute. I love Spirited Away. Me it's too. one of my favorite. My second favorite. Totoro is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Spirited Away is my second favorite. I like Spirited um, Away. I would love to fall in love with a river and have it turn into a dragon, but also a man. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for two hours already. Intelligent mother keeps looking at my way, huffing, dramatic sighs, and dirty looks shooting across the room. I have no interest in engaging, so I continue to ignore her. Mm-hmm. Find which, which to be honest, ignoring Karen's is like the one of the yeah, worst things you can do. Like, like, oh, how? Why can't you hear me yeah. breathing distastefully in your direction? <laughs> Finally, she stops a nurse and says, you need to tell that person to cover their awful offensive tattoo. Nurse gives a blank stare back at Entitled Mother, but she continues, it's scaring my child. He's traumatized. First of all, Spirited Away is not- what tattoos are. Yeah. And second, like Spirited Away has no like real- Terrifying imagery. Yeah, there's some scenes that are a bit weird, but like, there's you no Barbara's like pussy. you Barbara's pussy. <laughs> but there's no like. He's got to do a few <laughs> I said, come <laughs> in, and just a big gaping My hole. Baby. But like, there's nothing in Spirited Away that's like scary. That's gonna be imagery that's gonna traumatize a child. No. The nurse looks at me. I met her. I met her gaze out of the corner of my eye. She looks down at the entitled mother and tells her to wait outside or in the car if she has a problem. Yes. Entitled mother keeps saying how traumatized her child is. She's woken him up now from her yelling. She tells the security that I need to move or cover up my horrific arm, or she's going to call the cops for indecent exposure. At this I'd point, love to see can that. you imagine? Arrested the, for can you imagine? Time. At this point, every one is fed up security tells her to quiet down and take a seat or leave and that's her final warning that's her final warning at this point i'm laughing can you imagine like in imagine but also no imagine like flagging down a nurse who's probably busy doing something important related Mm -hmm. to nursing and Mm -hmm. is that excuse me i don't think i don't think can you tell her to cover it up like what's the nurse meant to do no. no, no, like, what are you talking about? Like, can you imagine living in 2020? I mean, I don't know how old I'm sure this was only posted, what, a year or so ago. Yeah. Like, can you imagine living in this day and age and being, like, still traumatized or, like, scared of, like, tattoos? Like, what are you talking about? It's ridiculous. They are everywhere now as well. And it's one of those things that's, like, you're in public. So you're this can't literally be the first in public. person you've ever seen with tattoos. But that- also, like, your babies. 
asleep. But again, this is the same kind of thing as like when people try to mask homophobia by saying yeah. I'm protecting children and just women. It's like this woman just clearly doesn't like tattoos or body mm-hmm. modification because she finds it upsetting because she's so like nervous about being herself that mm-hmm. she has to be an absolute deranged woman that like she's now using her child as an excuse. Your yeah. daughter, the You're child upsetting was asleep. my baby. Like yeah. the, the child has no comprehension about what it even is. No, if it's a baby asleep in her arms, how on earth is it even going to see far enough across exactly, the room to know exactly. what a tattoo it's is? It's like you were sitting right next to the person as well not that, that would make it any better vision but is also like about a foot in front of a them. foot yeah i just that's unhinged i just couldn't imagine having anyone like yeah when i'm on trains and things like i get stares at quite a lot to be honest children more fascinated yeah they, especially now that i've got like people like sonic the amount of children that go he's got sonic yeah. sonic because sonic they kind of get excited and i can't imagine having a spirit array tattoo any kid's gonna go that's terrifying because yeah, again disgusting. it's a f-ing cartoon mm-hmm I don't understand Unhinged. these people. So this one is called Karen secretly films me jogging and shows the video to my boss. What? Seven. What? What? Let me. Let is that me, a let KKK me. rally? Like oh, why would why why would, why it would be, you care? Yeah. Why would be why why would it be traumatizing? Right. Yeah. Have a listen to this, everyone. I recently had an emergency appendectomy. I've also had one of these What's as that? well. It's where you have your appendix out because okay. it's going to kill you. And recovery has been slow. I had to take time off from my own athletics, but worse, from coaching kids in the sports program that I'm involved with. The experience made me step back and realize I built my whole identity around being active and healthy. So the hit to my physical abilities um, as a result of being sick and the healing process and the healing process has made me feel lost. I've been working yeah. to regain the joy I used to experience from exercise without going, oh, you used to be so much faster than that or your techniques used to be so much better, girls. I mean, that's quite relatable. I can imagine it must be quite horrible. I think horrible. after I have yeah. my chest surgery, I'm going to be like, oh, I can't do any lifting. It's yeah. going to really set me back. Yeah. There we go. There's no way to get it back other than training. So despite the anxiety, I started running again as soon as the doctors allowed me to. I went to my local track and just did a few laps, a few slow laps every morning. Morning, building up speed every few days just to allow my body to heal and recover. Occasionally there were other people on the track, but I didn't really notice because I had headphones. But little did I know, my friends were wrong. It was not all in my head. I was being watched. Little did she my know? My friends warned me that I was being watched. And more than that, I was being judged. For God's sake. On Friday, I was setting up for practice at the kids' program and the head coach asked me into his office because a parent had a complaint. A parent I didn't know too well, who I shall call Karen, was there and she said she had a specific complaint about me. The meeting almost didn't happen because of the Karen's initial refusal to put on a mask. What a surprise. Oh, wow, yes. But eventually her desire to tell on me, for whatever reason, overrid her freedom to infect everyone. I was a bit nervous, as anyone being called to meet in with their boss over a complaint usually is. I sit down in the office and Karen is playing a video to my boss of me running on the track that she filmed from afar. What? Oh, get a grip. I was horrified because no one is ever totally used to seeing themselves on video. Oh, yes, relatable. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, relatable, yeah. <laughs> and because I was embarrassed about how slow I was. But most importantly was why a virtual stranger was filming me in a private facility going about my business. She then went on to explain that her eight-year-old son was one of the players on her squad and was lapping me in the video and insisting the coaches need to hold themselves to higher athletic standards than the younger players if they want to prepare them for college teams. Her son is eight years old oh college is like what 21 20 18 something that like that is, i mean Unhinged. i've heard of, ab- of i've surgery. heard of ableism but then there's in that this is intense isn't it my boss patiently but firmly explained to the karen that my physical abilities are not the comparison's concern and personnel are closely managed by the head coaches to understand their unique situations that they might be going through and that her son would not be impacted Karen then went on to say, my being out of shape was probably connected to why I've been taking so much time off lately. That is so hot. What, what, oh, wow. Isn't this a juicy, disgusting little Vile. tale of nonsense? Technically, yes, this is because I was in hospital, but still, it's not very nice to hear. And complaining that the personnel changeover isn't good enough for her kids. No, she needs them into college. Yes. Mm -hmm. My boss again reiterated that the head coaches hadn't taken or had any time off and that I was still one of the most skilled in the area that I instruct. So this was not her concern. She asked if there was someone else she could speak to, but he explained as the owner and founder of the program, there was not. I knew my boss was intentionally avoiding saying that what had happened to me and alluding to a health issue to protect my privacy. But I figured maybe being transparent with her would show her how ridiculous she was being. Oh, I don't think that's going to go well, is it? Oh, just you wait, girls. But when I explained what had happened to me, she just turned around to the boss and said, well, maybe you should follow her until she's healed and bring on someone who's actually good at their job. My son needs someone out there who can keep up with him. 
My boss respected what I was trying to do, but made clear we weren't going further with that strategy and to avoid setting a precedent of sharing coach's personal circumstances. She kept kicking up a fuss, but the coach finally told her she had to get back on the field or leave. She started physically leaving, but continued fussing about how she was not satisfied and would be re- would not be recommending us to other parents. That's yeah. so disgusting. Isn't like, I don't even, I actually find it hard to even... Comprehend. Comp- like, Literally. how can you be that? Like, we, there's entitlement and, mm-hmm. and like, and some people can be like slightly, I should say deluded, but sometimes people make judgments in a quick succession where yeah. it's like, they haven't really thought about the situation. They've they might jumped be a bit, the gun. They've jumped so the gun speak. a bit. But when you hear that someone's actually just come out of quite major surgery, mm. blah, 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 and all that stuff, like to then still go, well, you should fire her until, until she's here. Yeah. Like, yeah. that is so disgusting. Yeah, it's also illegal. It's That's like, vile. You really think that your child is going to get on track in college and he's only eight years old. Like, he's going to have so many other different interests before yes, college yes, yes. is even an idea. I can imagine this is one of those parents who live vicariously through their oh, children. Oh, yeah, they have it's, nothing going it on It sounds very much like pageant mums were like go baby yeah, you go have to put baby all this eight cake eight pounds of makeup on your face mm-hmm. like it, it sounds very much it's, like it's child forcing pageantry. their child to like do stuff because I just find it yes there will be kids who enjoy this kind of stuff but I feel like when you start saying things like that it gets mm-hmm. to a stage where you're I feel like you're forcing it a bit yeah oh absolutely absolutely yeah. she's forcing it the idea that she was like well, you need to get someone else better on while she's gone would then also be like oh well don't bring the other lady back no because she had surgery no yeah, we, we yeah, should yeah. keep this new one on yeah, well, yeah I won't be recommending that no, it's die. That. That is really, that. It's really horrible. I think that's what a vile, cretinous human being. Mm. Absolutely disgusting. Mm-hmm. Vile. Vile. Electric chair. Vile Beat. plume. Vile plume. Vi- yes, vile plume. Sun spore that bitch. Yes. <laughs> Stun her. <laughs> so this one is called Why Do You Have Gay Comics During Pride Month in the Adult Graphic Novel Section? My Kids Could See It. <sighs> we all know how much corporations sure love LGBTQ people during Pride Month of June and will the try to capitalise on gayness as much as they can by offering queer-centric products and promoting stuff in store. So I'm looking through the adult... Just in capitals. I mean, adult! You know, adult section. The adult graphic novel section at a bookstore downtown. Adult meaning the books are directly to a mature audience, not necessarily smutty or like sexual nudity stuff. Smutty adult Smut- big titty lady videos it's, on the internet. It's just... Books aimed at an adult yes, of audience. Course, yeah. And like most bookstores, the children's comics and children's books are separate from separate from the adult comics. Most parents understand this and tend to keep their young children away from the adult section. Which I mean, I remember my my library in Devon. It was like a whole child section was on one side of the mm-hmm. library, and the adults were in a completely different section. And then like there was like the kiosky like sectionary bit in like the, yeah. in the middle. Yeah, so it's the, usually pretty well divided, yeah. isn't it? There's You're not never put, like gay fiction right next to like Peppa Pig. Does exactly, this. Ella, <laughs> naughty mummy. <laughs> Taking that crack pipe. Can you imagine? Peppa Pig, the adult Peppa Pig. Oh, well, Just she does, like, well, she is a pig, a little cash yeah, pig. Yeah, she is, yeah, a little Mommy's cash pig. Mummy's a cash pig. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Mummy's a cat, disgusting. Oink, oink, bitch. What's that, daddy uh, pig? <laughs> in comes entitled homophobic mother with tiny child. Must have been about six, seven years old. Now, as said previously, it's Pride Month. So at the end of the adult graphic novel section, there's a pedestal where LGBTQ-centric graphic novels and books are displayed. Of course, Tiny Child, after deciding he was bored with all the Smurfs and Garfield comics or something like that, decides to start browsing exactly that section with all the graphic novels. However... The entitled mum is completely neglecting her child by texting on her phone and not paying attention to where he's going. I hear the kid giggling and realise that he's opened a copy of a French, I don't know how to say that French book, but oh. it's a very lesbian-centric, friendly graphic novel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. Well, lovely, yes. A lesbian drama. A lesbian drama. <laughs> so I try to take the book out of the kid's hands and the mother suddenly comes out over here, entitled mother, excuse me, what's going on? Me, oh, I'm sorry. I just saw your child has got his hands on an inappropriate graphic inappropriate graphic novel so I was just trying to gently take it away from him what do you mean suddenly she sees the contents of the page that her child was looking at tiny child lesbians lesbians (laughs) (laughs) she looks over her kid stop looking at this I need a manager who is the manager here employee comes over is there a problem ma'am yes in why is this store trying to promote perversion in, in young children Excuse me? I'm confused. My child was exposed to disgusting filth. How dare you put this shit in comic book section where any child could see it? 
the employee. Where did you find it? Because this book is supposed to be in the adult graphic novel section. It's a comic book. It's a comic book. Therefore, children, you people are trying to turn children into disgusting FAG perverts. Oh. See, there are nude women being perverted with each other in this book. She points to the page. It's what, saying book. And apparently it's a comic. And now you're saying it's a oh, book. What you're saying, she points at the page, tapping repeatedly like a maniac. The employee. Ma'am, that's clearly an adult book. Mm. And was on display in the adult section. Mm -hmm. And as it's Pride Month, we are happy to have this here. Pride Month? What is there need to be proud of? Degeneracy in yes. this store full of F-A-G-G-O-T-S? Is this where you're, is this what you're telling me? The employee, okay, that's enough. I don't need this kind of abuse from you. Leave now, calm the hell down or I will call the police. I mean, for F's sake, lady, you're two blocks away from the gay village. Learn about this neighborhood before making that kind of spectacle. Entitled mother, you're gay too? Get away from me and my son. Employee. Okay, F it. That's enough. Stephanie, he he mutters to the other employee, call the cops. She needs to go. No, I'm leaving on my own. She proceeds to yank her child by the arm and quickly makes an exit and screams, you're all going to hell. And well, the, yeah, and that's, well, how, that's basically you're how the story ends. Stupid bitch. Can you imagine? Like, I... The thing is, there's nothing more annoying than when you see parents not paying attention to their children. They're too busy in their own little world. And then they get angry at other people because they're getting annoyed at their child or their child's like naughty. Oh, well, it's their like, inability to parent their and children. It's ridiculous. Because I, I, I mean, as someone who worked in retail for so long, you would see all the time mm. where kids would be like knocking over stands or like pulling things out of the cupboard, uh, like the shelves. We would sometimes sell like uh, football stickers. Oh, yeah. And they would be on the tills. And the, the amount of kids that would come in and just like pull the, like, pull the stack down because they want these football stickers. And their parents would then get angry we us because we were like, can you not do that, please? Yeah. I remember this one kid was, uh, had, I don't know what it was in his hand, but he was like tapping where my scanner was and mm -hmm. kept tapping it. And the mother wasn't doing anything. I literally went, stop it. Oh, and, and the mum looked like, at me like, evil. she you. just gave me the evilest glare and I just glared back and I was like, I'm not going to take that shit. I was no. like, I'm not going to, I could mm -hmm. kind of get away with stuff at my work. But I was like, tell your fucking child to stop being a little rat. But, <laughs> but, in, but in this but in this case, I mean, the kid wasn't actually doing anything. The kid just happened to stumble upon that section. But like, pay attention to your child. Like, stop. And then getting angry because there's pride, but I have no sympathy for homophobes. <laughs> Zero sympathy. <laughs> tell your child to stop being a little rat. <laughs> I'm I've crying. broken Lux area. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you found that so amusing. I have my moment. Oh, what's happening to me? It's also like, oh, as God. this person said, you're right next to the gay village. Yeah. You're getting shocked that there's LGBT things next to like the gay village. Imagine oh, going into like Soho and then getting upset because you see like the gay ghost. Like when where Soho is literally like the, the queer gays. section of London. Yes. And giving, oh, how dare you? I like, read the Daily Mail. There's literally like sex shops on Soho where they sell like bondage yeah, things. It's not like it's not it? appropriate for children. But you, I can imagine there's some because parents take their kids down Soho anyway. But if you go to Soho, you can't be upset when you see adult things because it is like an adult. It's an adult area. Yes. And also, I'm sick of everything being child friendly. Like, not everything on this planet needs to be. Super exactly. Yeah. Kids. Not everything needs to be for children. Like, there is. If you've got children, wonderful, good for you. But we chose not to, and like, so does yeah, so millions I, and millions of other yeah, people. And therefore, I don't have to take responsibility for your choices. Yeah. Exactly. Like, if you don't want your children looking at things that they shouldn't look at, pay attention to your f***ing child. Mm. This is again. This is a smokescreen for their own homophobia. Oh, absolutely. They're just. They're just using their child. The child would have no idea what they're looking at, and you're now. Dead. Dead. You're now dead. You, you've you now decided to, to go, I'm going to take my homophobia out on this person and say that it's because they're protecting their child. But in reality, they're just scum. This one is called, You're my child. I have the right to poison you. Excuse me? I'm allergic to fish and seafood. It's not the anaphylactic type of allergy, but thank goodness. So I'm not going to die if I eat some, but I do throw up, get a stomach ache, and go very, very red. Enough fish and seafood and I break out in hives everywhere. My mother didn't believe it, and as a child, I couldn't stand up to her properly. She'd force me to eat stuff with seafood or fish in it to prove I wasn't allergic, then ignore me when I was sick. Oh, my, what a horrible... I so, this is a story I actually have heard so many times. Really? I don't know Disgusting. why. There are some parents that are literally just like, you're not allergic, grow up, and then just, like, continue to poison their children. That is awful. Unhinged. One day, she had a dinner party. I was dressed up beautifully and trotted out to parade before the guests, the debutantes ball. The debutantes yeah. ball. At the time, I was about nine years old, Precocious for my age And absolutely fed up With my mother making me sick When she headled out This fish cutlet Fish cooked with vegetables Rolled into a small ball Covered in batter and fried For me to eat I saw my child Chance Me loudly I can't eat that I'm allergic to fish And mother said No you're not Eat it 
me. I'm allergic. I'll throw up. My mother grabbed the fish cutlet, shoved it down my throat, and then said, eat. So I ate it. And then 10 minutes later, I go up to my mother, tug on her clothes, and say, I don't feel well, and throw up all over her. Good. I vomited on her, on her expensive carpet, and in full view of all the guests. My mother has a reputation for being a kind, generous, charitable <laughs> woman. Oh, wow. And very religious woman. So in front of all the guests, she couldn't do anything except act sympathetic and send me to Bev to recover. She never made me eat fish again. To have, like... Actual a allergies reaction, to something, yeah. and then to be like, everyone knows allergies are real. Exactly. Yeah. Like this isn't even a new thing that people just discovered. And I love the fact that that child, at the age that they were, was sort of like smart enough to, to make like, like a little I'm, bit of a plan to be like, I'm going to get my own back. Sick everywhere. Because that's ridiculous. Like. And it, it makes me feel as well, like, do you actually not love your child? No, you, no these like, people don't love their children. I'm They're like, doing it out of spite. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, surely, like, I can understand the first time you don't really understand maybe they do have a reaction or maybe it was just bad fish. The second time when they got ill, maybe maybe that could have been the, the idea of like, oh, maybe this there is something actually here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But to be like over and over again, forcing your kid to eat fish and yeah. then to be like, it's fine because I'm your mother and you'll do as I say. Like, yeah, that's, that's so that, awful. I used to hate that growing up. So that's, abusive. It's the most unparental thing is do as I say. It's yeah. the most unparental, like that's lazy. It's lazy and it's disgusting. I hear it all the time. And the thing as well, like, yeah, exactly. When when when, when anyone tries to give an opinion on something or like, any, like, you know, you're trying to tell someone to do something, even as an adult, when people say things like, it's just not right or, you know, because I say so, it's like actually explain to the person yeah. why. Well, they can't. That's why. They can't. They can't explain why. And that's why. But they can't say that because I don't want to is not actually enough. Yeah. Enough it's, of a... Um, the only thing I reason. can say is like... the only th because my I e don't want to believe that yeah. you're allergic, so I'm going to force you to eat fish. My Slap. ego won't let me believe that's it. Exactly it's exactly it. And it's like to tell to tell anyone... Same, same, it's the same as when you say anything about homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, I just because just it's awful. It's bad. It's wrong. But why, why? though? Yeah. Get, tell me an actual reason that's the thing. why it's wrong. They and don't say and the Bible because yeah. that's not, you can't use the Bible as a fact. You can't no. be like, oh, because this book says it, therefore mm. you're like, it's ludicrous. No, no one can because it's like, actually in reality, it's I'm just hateful, I'm small minded and my ego won't allow me to evolve. But also they're the main character in their own storyline. Yes, yes, so they yes. can't be seen as bad. They can't say me ho me holding homophobic opinions is bad. Yes. They're like, no, it's not, my no, I was taught and it was right yeah. when I was taught it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Not right, and you're wrong. No! So this one is titled, Learn to speak English and stop listening to foreign music. Oh my I'm god. I'm actually Scottish. <laughs> I'm <actually laughs> Scottish. This just happened to oh. me and I'm both shocked and laughing my ass off. I was on a bus on my way to college listening to a punk band I've recently gotten into. A band from Brixen in the German-speaking region of South Tyrol in Italy called Frey Wild. The bus is fairly packed, so I'm right at the front um, at the bit where you would put a pram or a wheelchair. A woman with a pram... A woman in blue. A woman in blue is serving drinks. Mm. A woman with a pram gets onto the bus and sits in the only free seat next to me. She looks down at my phone, uh, I still can't work out why, and sees that I'm listening to a song called Sieger Stefan de Hauf, wo Wörlia liegen blieben. Ooh! Uh, she's a German woman. You roughly, just said really racist things. I did, yes. <laughs> she's roughly translated, it says... Winners stand where losers fall and yanks one of my earphones out. You live in Scotland! Stop listening to your shitty Polish music! God, all of you Polish people are the same! She actually used a slur there that I'm not going to oh, say. okay, yeah. Refusing to be decent citizens and speak English. This is why we voted to leave the EU. Scotland didn't, but I digress. You should get your... Oh, my God. So we could get you um, our slur, as in, like, unwell person. The, yes. The our slur. Out of here! I'm Scottish, born and bred, apart from the week in Amsterdam and two week in Morocco and three weeks in the States and a week in France. I've stayed pretty much in the UK my entire life. I've never been to Poland, Germany, or for that matter, anywhere in Europe. I eventually had enough of her bullshit, so I tried to put her in her place and said, this is German music. I was born here to Scottish parents. I'm Scottish. She, uh, Karen then tries to make a rebuttal, but I got there first. Also, how does me listening to some punk, punk rock that happens to be in German, affect you? I have headphones, you can't hear it. And she, her eyes lit up as if she'd won the lottery. She oh, says, Why are you listening to that sinful demonic music in public? You're going to scare my child. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. So the this, children. Yeah. I look in the pram. Firstly, your child is asleep. Dead. Yeah, firstly, your child is dead. Um, secondly, I have headphones in. You can't hear it. And I can't hear it now. You've pulled one out. 
Cough and let me listen to my music in peace. Maybe Polish people aren't the problem in this country, but maybe it's stuck up judgmental racist slits like you. Mm-hmm. And as I called her out on her BS, she whacked the stop button and got off with oh, her Oh, good. And right how she fell over. Stop. Absolutely unhinged. That's, you know, so I've heard things of this before yes, this yes. nature of like people using for even just like people just talking on a bus in a different language yeah, and then and people suddenly go like insane. people are like why are you doing How England? Dare you? speak english it's so ridiculous to think that two people across the street or like on a bus somewhere who are having no conversation, conversation with you yeah. has absolutely nothing to do with you and you've heard them and gone this is an attack on me yeah i can't understand you so i'm going to lose my shit it's so it's so pathetic. and don't you know what's going to happen it's it's after, after you stop shouting and the car- then they are actually going to be talking about you in a different language exactly. so how, how do you like that and then you're going to have no idea what they're like it's about. so it's so ridiculous it doesn't make any sense no it doesn't and to be honest that the the fact that it's rooted in such hate. Well, hate doesn't really make sense, does it? Like hate, like if you really think about like f- like phobias and isms, they don't really, they're not really rooted in reality. They're rooted in abstract concepts of nonsense. It's cultural differences that have somehow evolved into aggression that is a huge issue that we need to dismantle. And it's, it's going to take a lot longer than just after a podcast being like... Well, the thing is as well is like, I think a lot of it comes from uh, people being in power for so long as well yes. because they become like a God complex. And so mm-hmm. all of a sudden, if you become, if you're in power for so long, it's easy to then get the younger generations who may have only really known of you by the time they're adults to suddenly be like brainwashed by yeah, you. And exactly then all of a sudden that. it's, oh yes, it's people fine. People who are like 70 years old should not be running countries. It's weird, isn't you it? You have what, no idea what do you how, have any idea? What, like you have nothing in common with 20 year olds. No. are actually like, now, realistically, between 20 and 40 are the majority of the tax paying people across the planet. Like, yeah. The millennial generation and the Gen Z generation are the hugest wor- members of the workforce. And yeah. it's like, ugh. Why are these like old, 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 old people being like, no, seven day work week. Be happy you got an hour at lunch. We're not paying you. Yeah. But no, I agree. I think I think we need more younger people within the political spectrum to actually have a well balanced. Like I'm not saying old people need to be like banished, but like at least have younger representations everywhere as well. So like they can truly try to like actually be like, well actually no, maybe we do want right. You shouldn't be able to be a politician. You shouldn't be able to enter the political world from 20 and then still be a politician at like 80 years old. That shouldn't be allowed. You should have to have education outside of the political system first. I think you should have to have an engineering, science, doctorate, anything. Well, it's a bit like related to actually the industries that you're trying to overlook. Our prime minister now, Rishi, was born into wealth, was wealthy, was very privileged. The whole with when it comes to and money. And he was chancellor of the exchequer. It's and like, and well, suddenly you he, earn any if, money. You if, just if, have it. Exactly. And he's like, we're going to save all the people from the the hate, well, the energy I crisis. I don't have and stuff. any working class friends. You have no idea what it's like to no. be poor or you to no struggle a, a day. Is. And the fact that he's going to make decisions now. What poor people and like people who are less off like get to do or have it's unhit how it's how incorrect. how i'm sorry but how it, just being born into like wealth and money shouldn't allow you to suddenly be in power like yeah. it's so insane you've mm-hmm. got no idea what it's like to actually live in the real f-ing world I completely agree girls yeah entitled entitled so this one is called eyewitness entitled mother getting destroyed oh mm. so i was on a bus entitled mother was shot End of story. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this today and I cannot stop laughing. I was traveling my on my city's metro. It wasn't much. It wasn't very crowded at the time. But all the seats were occupied. Metrosexual. <laughs> disgusting. We're not gay. We, we wash ourselves. We're not gay. Disgusting. Guys, anyone watching this, like, younger people won't really remember this, but back in, like, the early 2000s, straight men had to invent the word metrosexual mm-hmm. because they couldn't, even consider being called anything slightly feminine or gay because they might have like trimmed up their beard or like yeah. wore slightly less masculine clothing or like washed their asshole. Mm. They're like, no, that means we're gay. So they're going to invent the word metrosexual. Oh, unhinged. W- unhinged. Fab- oh, God. Fragile. Anyway, the metro wasn't very busy. All the seats were occupied, but there was enough space to stand where you weren't right up against another person. Oh, slat. There was this kid sitting in the reserve seat, the one that that is meant for handicapped people, pregnant women, or old people. The kid was probably about 16 years old. He is the hero of my story. Oh. The entitled mother instantly sees our hero sitting in the reserve seat and just stares at him. The kid didn't move though. This irked entitled mother a lot. 
and she started to moving towards the kid with heavy footsteps. Oh, here she comes, girl. She comes near him, stops again and does the stare. The kid again doesn't budge. Then she starts screaming at the top of her lungs. She starts berating the kid for sitting in the reserve seat, not giving it to not and not giving it to someone more deserving like a mother of herself with a young child. I don't know how logic was, but the seats aren't reserved for them anyway. She kept shouting and screaming, shouting, crying and shaking, shaking. Then the kid, out of nowhere, rolls up the side of his jeans and detaches one of his artificial <gasps> legs and keeps it in front of entitled mother. The look on her face was priceless. It looks like she was mortified and embarrassed at the same time. She just backed away silently and then got off on the next stop of the train. Wow. Just goes to show that like, you don't know what people might have well, or this what is, they're going through. All disabilities like, are visible. Exactly. <laughs> and this like idea, like I could understand maybe seeing a kid and being like, oh, why is he not giving up? And then, but actually maybe think for a second after your initial kind of like, oh, that's a bit, oh, actually maybe something is wrong. Yeah. Instead of going over and berating them, just be like, okay, it's fine. Maybe there is actually something more than just yeah. a kid being bratty or yeah. a kid being like lazy or something. Yeah. So I, this kind of goes on to like other things that I've seen. Have you seen those videos of like, the one particular in my mind is that there's this woman that's trying to, is waiting for a disabled space. Mm -hmm. And um, she's not disabled herself, but her husband is. But the person who's parked in the space is disabled. Okay. But because they're in like a work style van, they've got just like a work van. She's like opening the window and like, you can't park there. That's for disabled people. You can't, have you got a blue badge? Have you got a blue badge? And he's like, yes. Shouldn't have to show her, but yes. And then she's like, well, you can't park there anymore in the van. And he's like, are you disabled? And she's like, no, my husband is. It's like, well, then you can't either. Yeah. You actually can't park in disabled bays. I saw so a level of irateness. On one of the so public freakout videos I've seen, there's a similar thing like that. Mm -hmm. the, the woman starts telling the person that the other person's not disabled enough to use the place. Oh, unhinged. Un not disabled enough. Not Get disabled enough. Get a grip. I could never imagine behaving like this. I someone. So like on a slightly <clears> different note, when it comes to these, like, because on, so basically on the underground in london underground like it's like the one the seats that are nearest the doors on the yeah. edges they're like slightly different color they're like gray with like different like has a different patchwork on it and it's for yeah like pregnant people like elderly women like el elderly, elderly women, women not elderly, elderly men no but they need to get a grip yeah you know, elderly people people obviously with disabilities and stuff and like, i tend i try my hardest not to sit in them like yeah, regardless, don't, because it's just not needed. even even if like the train's like empty it still feels awkward but also there's, there's that strange feeling sometimes where like there's someone who like is slightly older or someone who might want to use the seat and you ask them like would you like to use the seat and they say no because it yeah. happens quite often but like, no, no no it's fine and then like when you carry on the train other people get on but then other people start looking at you like why have you not given your yeah. seat away to this old person or whatever and it's like yeah. well i did try so i try not to like Sit in them anyway because that, like, that is so much like anxiety. I though, it's, as well. it's like the anxiety. Like, I don't, like, know, don't think I'm not giving the seat up because yeah, I actually yeah. I'm a caring person. I'm so, a lovely person, yeah. so I just <clears> won't <throat> sit in the seat anyway. Like mm -hmm. I'll do my best not to sit in them. Yeah. For the for the main point of this story is like don't just assume because someone looks yeah. fine that they they, they haven't got some something going on. Like mm -hmm. it's it's even and the, you know even that goes that goes above you know this story. Like some of the happiest people also have stress and anxiety and Robin sadness. Williams going, Robin is Williams a is an example. example. No one no one thought he was going through anything really like or maybe one or two people close to people might have thought he was something strange was going on but like to the wider world he appeared to be the most happiest lovely energetic person ever and then sadly he, he took his own life deceiving. and like check on check on your friends even the ones that appear to be happy all the time just message them and be like how are you doing mm. what's life like no like, would you like to chat about anything can i come like yeah, actually agree, check in agree. don't don't be the one that people keep checking in on but actually check in on other people too uh, yes i completely agree sometimes people are just willfully ignorant mm -hmm. they're just like ah of course that's a bit and it's like well just open your eyes for a second and pay attention yes, yes. i feel like the whole moral of this podcast can be just pay attention to what's just going on pay around. attention pay yeah pay attention to the world you live in have some social awareness yes. like you as I, I i know that you think that you are the most important person in the world we all do it to a mm -hmm. certain extent we all mm -hmm. think that our existence and our way of living is, is like the, the only right, one is the only one all of us do it even i do it like terry does we, mm -hmm. we all have moments but people have different levels of it yeah. and there are some people out there They're who actually deranged. genuinely believe that their existence is the most important and you're not that important i always mm. say this to people who like get paranoid about people looking at them they're like wearing a new item of clothing that they've never worn before yeah. and suddenly they feel like people are staring at them no, no one, one gives a no shit one cares. No, no one, one cares. cares about no you. One going cares. in the street like no one gives a shit about you mm -hmm. and i know that sounds mean it's just it's reality just, it, yeah. the majority people of people going on. exactly the majority of people out there don't give a fuck. so if you want to wear some like gothy jeans or wear black lipstick or dye your hair pink just do it because the majority of people don't give a shit about you exactly. and it's, it's it's that sounds awful to say but it's like 
That should give you the confidence to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, yeah. There is some level of like, almost like a safety net in the knowing that no one cares. About I people. do think as well, I think a good point to make about this is like, if you are someone who sees something you love about someone, say you see someone who's got lovely pink hair and you're mm. really into it. And I think sometimes people, it's hard to distinguish sometimes when someone's staring at you. Admiring. If or, it's yeah. like admiring or they're staring because they're judging. Mm. So if you see someone who's got pink hair and you love it, Go tell them. Let them know. Like, let them I know. Because hair. I bet it would make their day. The Absolutely. amount of people that say to me, uh, when I used to be at Morrison's, I love your piercings. I love this. And then this. you ate them. And then I ate them. I did. I am a cannibal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, it's, it's, you know, just tell people that you love their hair, mm -hmm. their makeup, their thing. Honestly, it'll make their day. Absolutely I make agree. their day. Absolutely agree. But don't ever talk to me in public. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> and do. also, if you see one of us in public, you are more than welcome to come as a run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one is called You're going on vacation? Take my children with you! Oh, Can you imagine? Uh, I would be immediately like, oh. no! My boyfriend's cousin Died. has four children. <laughs> she is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Intrusive thoughts, one. Yes. Each of her kids is the personification of Bratty. The said cousin refuses to discipline them and constantly makes excuses for their behaviour. She's also very judgmental of our decision not to have children. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this yep, in my yep, life. Yep, yep, yep. She has often made some snide comments towards me, implying that I'm a selfish C-word who is depriving my boyfriend of the joys of raising children. Have you ever thought that maybe he doesn't want kids too? For these reasons, and for her general entitled behaviour, my boyfriend has cut ties with her. Mm. Good. However, when he and I visited his parental home three days ago for his parents' anniversary, we ran into her again. My boyfriend's dad urged him to use this occasion to mend bridges. Oh, they always do, don't they? They yeah. don't understand. It's but yeah, if it was in their shoes, they'd be like, no, no, no. Oh, well, I mean, my, my my brother's a perfect example of that. Mm. Oh, the family in it. The, the, no, family. the family was disgusting and mm. I left it because of how it toxic was it point. was. Yeah. So we both tried to make some conversation and engage in small talk with her. During our conversation, the boyfriend mentioned that we were leaving for Melbourne vacation in a few days. No. Oh, hot. Oh. At this point, the cousin's eyes lit up and she says, Oh, that sounds like so much fun. My husband and I haven't gone anywhere since our honeymoon. And then she whines some more about how hard it is with them for four kids. If only they could afford such luxuries. Well, you decided to have children. You, children yeah, are don't a luxury. Have chil yeah, you four can't... children is a luxury. Exactly. I could tell where this was going and my boyfriend probably felt sorry for her and being the kind and generous soul that he is, offered to buy them a weekend resort. Oh, oh no. 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 No, 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 no. No, a, a, a very prestigious place to stay. The cousin, with the face scrunched up, says, That's nice, but why can't you just take us to Melbourne with you? The boyfriend, getting a bit annoyed but still patient, was like, Well, we want to spend some time alone together. Yep. Plus, we'll be meeting some close friends there. Besides, the place that I want to take you is a beautiful place. Your kids will love it. The cousin, in the annoying Karen tone, says, I still don't see why you can't take us to Australia. You're being so selfish, going on this great trip and sticking your family with a cheap weekend getaway. Pay for it yourself Pay for then. Yourself. For yeah, God's sell sake. a child. Like, why sell a child? Boyfriend's mum. Oh, he's making a very generous offer. Either take it or leave it. And the cousin, wearing the expression that morons wear when they think they've had a bright idea, says, I know. Why don't I? Why, why don't my husband and I go to that prestigious resort and you can take the kids to Melbourne? Oh, Imagine. I see. Just pour, yeah. So yeah, basically, the kids get off. rid of the yeah. children. We want it some time together. Yes. And everyone at this point was like, what? And the cousin said, it's a great idea. The kids have fun, can have fun in Melbourne and you too and my hubby and I can enjoy a peaceful weekend and they'll be with you. This <laughs> way the kids can actually spend some time with their uncle. You never make time to see them. Maybe because you make the environment toxic so they exactly. don't want to come and see also, them. Also, I don't want to ever see your children. <laughs> <laughs> Boyfriend, I'm offering for the last time. It's either the weekend at this resort or nothing at all. Why the hell would we ruin our vacation by taking your kids? And the cousin says, how could you say that? My kids are so well behaved. You'll have so much fun spending time with them. Well, then why don't you take them somewhere? I find it hard to believe that if you're acting like this is an adult, that your kids act any better. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, it'd be times 10, wouldn't it? Besides, my husband and I could really use the quality time together. You and that girl don't have any responsibilities. You should have no idea. You have no idea how hard it is to raise four children. If you can afford this trip, I don't see why you won't share with your family. And the boyfriend said one more word and you won't be going on to that resort that I offered. On hearing this, the cousin, STFU, 
We all had dinner together and she was quite mercifully quiet. If only her kids had followed her example. You think this would be the end of it, but no, we had seriously underestimated her dedication to the Karenness. This morning, the cousin showed up at our apartment with the kids in tow. I was shocked to see her, of course, and asked if something was wrong. She smiled and says, I'm here to drop the kids off. You're leaving tonight, right? Oh, wow. (laughs) Wow. Gagged. After taking a second to recover from the shop, a shock. I said, did you fall and hit your head? We told you we weren't taking your kids with us. What part of that did you not understand? She tried to convince me that my boyfriend had called her later on and agreed to take oh, the kids. I you. knew this was nonsense and called it such. The cousin became enraged and asked if, I, asked if I was going to break her kid's heart. Why would I break our promise and how my boyfriend and I could be so cold? I called my boyfriend after, telling him what was going on, and I turned on the speaker. My boyfriend proceeded to chew her out brutally, telling her he would no longer pay for the weekend away, and that this is exactly the kind of behaviour that made him cut ties with her. So the two points I want to make about this that stood out in my mind. So first of all, the cousin says, oh, you're depriving your boyfriend of, of like, a children being chance at raising family. But then in the same sentence saying, you have no idea how hard it is to raise children. Yeah, I know, but that's stupid, You're contradicting yourself. But also, it's not like they're even brother and sister no, or like cousins like they're cousins so it's like why they're like even if my sister like i love my sister i love her children but that they are her responsibility and she would yeah. never even think about trying to put them onto me in a way that would be like in an inconvenient way yes yeah, so if she ever says will you babysit of course i'll say yes because i actually love and adore my oh, sister imagine though that we're very... going to universal next year and she's like can yeah, you take... just take the kids yeah. she would never do Could that of course but i mean no, I... it's your sister's sensible yeah exactly. <laughs> but like the idea of then like it's even further down, like the less the less connection line, where it's like it's mm. a cousin asking you to take your second. Would it be second? I least think it's there? second cousin. What, what second would, step? I'm woman. not sure what that would even be. No, I, That's so far away from like relationship. It comes that th- these children have nothing to do with me. Yeah. Like it's so weird. weird that you would then be like, "This is your responsibility because you never see them." You're like, depriving us of a holiday. It's like, like, but he also just offered to pay for one. Yeah, so that's it's not weird. depriving at all. Really hate it as well when people are like, "Oh, we if only we could afford those luxuries that you go on." It's like, well, you have four kids. Yeah. Like, did you not think that four children was going to cost money yeah, at exactly. any point? Yeah. It's shocking how much um, I don't see people because they're like. <clears throat> there is a case of like you need to have provide a basic level of care for your children in order for them to kind of thrive in life. Yes. Like they there needs to be some sort of like base level. And it seems like a lot of the time people are like, oh no, blah 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 and they're not seeing it as like, no, it is a luxury to have a kid. Yes. It's a real luxury. It's like twenty years basically of like full on care. Well, especially if you have kids <clears throat> now. Mm. And it's, even now, it's probably even longer than that. It's probably yeah. more like 25. It is so much co- more common now for kids to stay at home a lot longer than mm-hmm. when, like, my, you know, my parents were, like, mm-hmm. around and kids. Like, now, it's, like, very common for people to stay at home a lot longer because mm-hmm. of the way the world is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when you have children, you, co- you... The thing is, as well, I can understand if, I don't know... You can make ends meet, but, like, trying to make ends meet for four children for four and children, two adults like, is a lot of work. That's the thing. Like, you could say, oh, you know, maybe one... This sounds mean to say. I, don't, I was technically a mistake. I wasn't meant to be born. Yeah, me I too. just have... Like, you can say, oh, okay, yeah, but we didn't mean to have we the first plan. child or you something. Was it planned? But... F- you can't say I've had four unplanned children. Like yeah. at some point, like, well, at why are you not like, wearing condoms? Yeah, like, like, sis, you, if you're like, engaging in adult activities, yeah, you're like, planning you should, children. You should really at that point be like, okay, we keep having unplanned children. Maybe we should like wear condoms, have having, contraception yeah. and stuff. Like, come on. If you're busy having unprotected heterosexual sex, then I'm sorry, you can't be like, that child was unplanned. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you. that's planned. Yeah, like, <laughs> come on. Like, it, come and, on, sis. Again, I think it comes down to the stage. If you have children, wonderful, and I'm glad for you, but we don't want children. Other people don't want children. And it's no one else's responsibility to look after or care for your children that yeah. you chose to have. This one is called, Your Child Will Not Fit! Oh dear. Are you ready? Okay, I saw this when I was shopping recently. This store that I go to has carts that have a spot that can be utilized for a small child to sit. I feel like we're all very aware uh-huh. of this, yep. aren't we? Think of a toddler you don't want to have running around loose. Let me just say that if your child is able to put their foot down while the cart is moving, they're probably a bit big to ride in the car. Yeah. Like, this is like an adult child almost, isn't it? I was waiting for service at the counter whilst I saw this. An entitled mother came in with her child, and the child looked to be about 10 or 11 years old. 
old. Yep. The kid seemed to be a typical active kid, very healthy, very robust and well-fed. His decision was made that he didn't want to walk around the store, so he popped him in the... So the entitled mother popped him in the cart. The store manager sees this and asks if the child needs any assistance. And there was someone at customer service requesting the use of a wheelchair with one of these carts attached to it. The entitled mother got pissy because her child was tired and had a long day and he shouldn't have oh, to work. You do miss out. You do. By this time, I'm just hanging around to see what happened next. The entitled mother decided that her kid will ride in the shopping cart. So the kid, under the mother's instruction, climbs into the shopping cart and then gets stuck in the seat. God. The entitled mother is now mad because the seats in the car aren't big enough for her child. The manager is calling his supervisor. The child is wailing. The entitled mother is screaming. And the only thing I can think of is, why isn't that child walking around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have two kids and the only time they would ride in the cars was when they were really, really, really little and could fit. As soon as they were steady on their feet when we went out, it would be normal for them to walk alongside the shopping cart. Is that out of the normal or is that normal? I used I to see this quite a few times, actually, in Brighton when... I would have my adventures to Tesco occasionally. Uh, there was a specific, specific like family, and they would always try and have like as many carts as possible and try and fit their like massive children into them. But they're like, these these children aren't like suitable sizing yeah. for this little like yeah. seat. Well, you, I would always see it mainly like the the parents just put their kids inside the trolley, like just in oh, in yeah, the main true. part yeah, of the trolley, yeah, and have them yeah. sit in the. And it is a bit. It's like what you're doing. It is, yeah. Because then you're like, but there's even giant signs that are like don't well, put yeah, yeah, your child to. in the but trolley; like, the they'll ma- die. The amount of kid parents that would just put their kids well, inside. You, yeah, you used to work in a supermarket. Yeah, was it just something you would see all the time? All the, Do you all have the any, like injury stories? Did everyone, everyone were like, I'm gonna die? There was one kid who stood. So it actually says, don't stand the back on the back of the trolley. I don't know. Like in America, where oh, their yeah. carts are, um, I, I saw a child like stand on. There's like a bar, and they stood on this bar and held onto the like the handle. But because of the weight distribution, now all of a Smack. sudden the, the the trolley just flipped backwards and like cr- not cr- crushed the child, but like <laughs> yeah, but she was dead. <laughs> but like obviously landed on the child. The child off it. The parent went crazy, and I honestly, I kind of because I was on the other side of the store, and I was like, good. Good, yeah. I was like, it's a bit like, oh, for goodness sake, learn danger. Like, maybe, again, watch your child. Yeah, what, what watch is it doing? what your children for, Yeah, doing. learn danger. Also, this child was old enough to know to that know they better. shouldn't be doing it. They weren't, like, two years old. Because a two-year-old would not have been, two, three-year-old would not have been heavy enough to lift this huge trolley. It would have, this kid must have been maybe, like, eight, eight or I nine. I also think, though, as well, a lot of these entitled parent stories, like... Sometimes kids just need to learn that their actions have consequences. Yes, and by no, 100%. In and going, no, it's all about my baby. <laughs> sometimes just isn't the way. Like, sometimes a child does need to accident, not like severely maim themselves forever, but sometimes, like, if they need to, if they're going to play with a cat and the cat's like, bat, and then they're upset because the cat's hit them, it's like, yes, well, don't. Fuck around with don't, the cat. Don't then. hit the cat. Yeah, yeah, don't like, hit the cat. There's, well, there's, 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 there was actually a video that went viral like a year or so ago of, uh-huh. a, of a kid who was about maybe one years old doing that to a cat and the cat started hitting it and then mm. the owner started screaming at the cat. Oh, stupid. And it was like, well, so you let your cat get tortured yeah. and then you're upset because now That's your baby the thing, is. The, is the, the child wasn't just like stroking it, the child was like squeezing it and things and the cat just had enough. And it's yeah. like, well, the child needs to realize that it can't do that. Instead mm-hmm. of the, but now you've just said to the cat's wrong. So the child's learning that doing that to an animal is fine. Yeah, which will then happen to humans later yes. in life. Like, if you're going to lean on a trolley and you're, a, like, a fully grown child and it's going to flip over and hurt yourself, then that's what the warning sign was there exactly, for. Exactly, like, it like, literally has big it. warning. It's stupid. It's really Silly. stupid. It could be a lot of it as well. Parents don't want to accept that their kid's growing up. Yeah, oh, I think a lot of it is that. Yeah. yeah, is that my baby? My baby. Like, that's a 27-year-old man. My <laughs> <laughs> he needs to not be babied. My, so my sister used to work at, I'm not going to obviously tell what school it was and stuff, but when she, before she does her job now, she worked at, as a school just as normal teacher and this is back in Devon and she said the amount of like parents who would come in with their kids who were like six seven years old like carrying them like babies being like please take care of my precious it's like that like let that child walk in yeah like let that child you need to teach that child that like the whole like they can't just be carried into work like yeah that exactly it's like it's it's like these aren't babies anymore so this one is called entitled mother brings along her kid to work unannounced oh dear where does she, she work? Where Only she, fans. Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Only fans headquarters. I bet um, JK Rowling will be quiet about oh, that. Oh, yeah. She? She no, no, the heteros never do that. I love the abortion laws. Background. My company sets up booths at carnivals and we engage in several part-time... We engage several part-timers to assist the carnival. Okay. The part-timers are required to go around and go around the carnival grounds and distribute flyers, share information and di- um, direct viewers to our booth. Mm-hmm. 
the story. Oh dear. On the day of the carnival, after setting up, I met with a, one of the part-timers to prepare them for the day. Out of all the part-timers, only entitled mother was late. She mentioned she would be about 50 minutes late, but it was closer to an hour. As we couldn't wait, I briefed the rest of the people on the day's uh, activities and deployed them for the day. When the title mother arrives, she brings her kid in tow, mm. about five years old. Due to this job nature, we can't have her lugging around a kid with her while working. Entitled mother already knows this. Entitled mother proceeds to say, my husband couldn't handle the kid, so I had to bring her along. I can't have you working with your kid. Entitled mother, it's not my problem. If you don't like it, get someone to watch over him. Can you can you ever can you imagine wow. ever saying if I if if so someone came to the Morrison's with their child and they said we'll get someone to look after him they would be like no you need to go home yeah like that's horrendous you are asking for your child to get snatched you are you are asking for your child to get, exactly my co we're gonna call my colleague C sure who was watching this unfold offered to watch over the kid he was only required to help out during the start and the end of the carnival so it was entirely he was entirely free during the event I thought all right since he was free C I can watch over her, get her some food, watch some shows, play some games, but you'll need to pay me. The entitled mother, whatever, but I'm not paying for your time, only for my kid. C, grinning, says, sure. I was flabbergasted. C told me not to worry, he had a plan. Once the entitled mother started working, C brought the kid systematically, systematically through every single booth throughout the entire carnival. It was the kid's dream come true. Aww. And I believe her best day ever. Whatever whatever she wanted to eat, C bought. Whatever she, she wanted to see, C. Why? 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 Call why? Call why? 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 Charlie. Chris. Chris. Easy. Chris. Whatever the kid Clarence. wanted to see, Clarence <laughs> did whatever they could to fit everything that C wanted to do. See a lot of shows, eat a lot of food, won many prizes. Oh. At the end of the carnival, when we were clocking out, clocking the hours that we worked, Entitled Mother had the nerve to insist to be paid full, even though she was late for an hour. She said that because of various reasons, mainly due to her kid, that she should have uh, she should be paid regardless. Mm. She was ranting and I didn't really pay any attention. My manager nearby winked at me and took over. He said, with a very pleased look on his face, Die. We're pleased with your day's work and we'll pay you in full. So Entitled Mother looks at me and says, well, at least someone knows what they're doing. Thankfully, the smug on her face didn't last long. The sucker punch for Entitled Mother was that their kid roughly spent around $100. <laughs> Oh. And with the title of mother's pay being fifteen pounds an hour for eight hours, that was one hundred twenty dollars. She made a whoop it, a whopping twenty dollars for the whole day. C, oh sorry, sorry, Clarence made it a point to keep track of every expense, receipt, tickets, and everything that they had done throughout the day, and took tons of photos. Of course, in title of mother threw a fit, but with the amount of evidence and her daughter's voicing how much fun she had, the entitled mother had no case except to yell, "I'm not paying for this!" Grabbed her twenty dollars and her daughter and her daughter and stormed off. Oh, that's so. It's so it's just a th there's so many things wrong with this story. Okay, first of all, when the first in the first line it was like my husband can't cope. Like, well, then he shouldn't have had kids. But also, your child is not everybody else's responsibility. I just can't believe you'd say, "Well, get someone to look after him." Yeah, ex her, then. absolutely. But also, it does actually sound like the child is really sweet, and yeah, that is a that huge the, the, problem. The child had a wonderful time. It's so like, oh, maybe she just wanted a little day at the carnival, and that's such a shame that it's yeah. like, unfortunately, it's spoiled by this mum's incapability. But what worries me about this as well is like, I would hate for the fact that. Um, the mother to get angry at the child for having well, that's, fun that's, or for like that's the because thing, I feel it? like probably I bet that mother that's took a going. lot of that out of the kid because the kid did too much or like, yeah. was, I like, can't believe you spent all that money yeah, like, exactly. well, she's a child she's a and child your and responsibility children for one thing that we can say is children don't really understand the concept of money the idea that you would maybe potentially get angry at the kid for having a lot of fun and being like going on all like the rides or seeing the shows and winning toys and stuff like I feel mm. like that probably happened afterwards yeah it, does. it definitely feels like it's going that way Way, yeah it? it's still no one else's responsibility to mm. look after your children mm -hmm. and to go somewhere being like well if you don't want her here get someone to look after her like it's just unacceptable that, to me says you don't even like your kids yeah it sounds like you don't love your kids yeah it, it's just totally unacceptable yeah i mean i understand that like uh babysitting can go out of the window for mm -hmm. certain certain situations and things like that but it she's already married and it's yeah. the only justification this woman gave in this story was he didn't want to look after the kid. Yeah. And it's like, well, tough shit, sir. This yeah. is your, you've decided to bring a life into this world. You have to at least maintain a minimum, bare minimum for yeah. this life to thrive. It's so shocking how much of this we hear. 
Yes, and this yes, is only yes. like a selection of stories on our podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like, I, we try to diversify the stories in this, but like, actually, so like, basically, eighty percent of the stories on this is like this kind of thing They're where very pa- similar formula. Parents aren't they? are like f- trying to get their children off on someone else, supporting them off, and being like, "Well, you should look after my children because I had them." It's the it's, nature of entitlement. Yes, isn't yes, it? yes. One hundred percent. It kind of breeds the specific type of person yes. that has these kids, and ultimately, it's the kids who suffer. It, that's the problem. Like, I was very fortunate that my grandparents adopted all mm. three of us like and that's a big thing for people who like you know they were in their 60s when they adopted us like they'd <clears> already <throat> had kids and um, you know my dad and my auntie like they've already been grown up at this point mm. the idea that they would adopt three young children because my mum was completely like incapable incapable yeah. because she was like just so like well we don't do it to get the story but like my mum would probably be in a story like this. Like this is the kind, and I was very lucky and very fortunate and they never like, as old people, like they never once pawned us off on anyone. They were never like, oh no, we can't handle it. But like they, they did everything they could. And the idea that there are parents out there who are just like, well, get someone else to look after him then because I can't, I don't want, is so heartbreaking Mm -hmm. to hear like, because children really do suffer Mm -hmm. and they are, they they unfortunately will be the ones who grow up with anxiety disorders, Mm -hmm. with depression, Mm -hmm. with all these feelings not being loved and all these issues because their parents just like didn't give a shit and it takes it's so you, sad it takes you one second to think about the language that comes out of your mouth and yes. it's going to take you an exceptionally longer amount of time to fix a child's broken spirit yes and I think it, it, you know we can tie it into uh, coming out as gay and stuff one little comment a parent could make it being like oh don't wear that item of, oh, don't wear that it'll like, make you gay yeah, or like don't you know they can hear a tiny there's that prayers for Bobby uh uh, film where the mum I'm not going to get into, if you want to watch the film it's fine but like the, there's a really religious mum and her kid kills herself because it's like oh, wow. really hor- horrific and like the, one of the end like uh, lines is like before you say amen a child might be hearing yeah. and it was very obviously you watch the film to understand why that's said mm. but like Spoilers. it's one of the things that like you just just think about what you're saying around children because they children are smart are sponges and children will uh, literally absorb everything you say and do hence why you say don't necessarily say like to round a child because yeah. they will absorb it and start repeating it. So sometimes they, a child has thoughts independently of anything that you do and they will have their own emotions, their own personality that comes out through. Mine was obviously I was gay and I would sometimes hear homophobic things around me. People might not think what they're saying will affect a child, but that sticks in their brains and it lasts a lifetime. So think about what you're saying around children because it really can la- make a long lasting effect on their psyche. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the word psyche. Mm. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Rowley. Thank you, yes. I, that will be eight child million Child psychologist. Yes, <laughs> child murder. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been an, I, it's, an uh, eye-opening an experience, experience, experience for the family. Yes, yeah, a very bonding moment. Yeah, yes. bondage. Bond, bondage. Um, so please, guys, let us know down below any entitled have parent stories. Them? Have you encountered one of these people? Let us know the story. We'd love to read through them. Um, oh, just gosh. Yet, God. wow, it's, it's, it's a very passionate topic. It's very passionate because Leo. all it does is breed like resent. It does, doesn't I, it? I come away from some of these podcasts that we do, and I'm just like, I hate everyone. <laughs> Aren't they? Vile? Exactly. By the way, never feel pressured to have children if you don't want no, children. Yeah, never do life. not have children. Hashtag. Like, I'm gonna get a dog instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a prisoner, Callum. Yeah, there we go. He's chained yeah, up. Just yeah. take, just, don't just, have children, just yeah. take a prisoner. Yeah, just do what Boy George does and cage up a rent boy and then, you know, act like nothing happened and live a like, normal, happy life. And try where, and smuggle 13 uh, bricks yeah. of cocaine into yeah, New York. Yeah, exactly. Arrested. Just get away with it. Just be Die. a celebrity and get away with it. Yeah. Um, on that note... Arrest Boy George. <laughs> <laughs> hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, don't miss any videos. Of course, there's an audio version that we're about to be out yeah. in a week. Oh. And don't forget to look after your rats. Yes. <laughs> Bye.